Hello again, Chef Tim here at the Bistro, showing you a new pizza that we have from Big Daddy's. They reformulated their um, pizza, and it's also a pepperoni style pizza this time instead of the traditional just with cheese. So the pepperoni is also no pork, it's made with turkey and beef, and the crust has been reformulated with a different type of flour. It's milled a lot finer, and the end result tastes more like a pizza you get from Pizzeria. It's not the usual whole grain that you may be used to tasting and it has that grittiness to it. It's a really fine powder and it tastes a lot better than the other pizzas that we've used in the past. Um, in order to prep the pizza, the only thing you have to do, because it comes with pepperoni already on it, is I put down a piece of paper and I sprayed it with pan spray and then you'll fit one whole pizza and then a half a pizza. And it's pre-baked and pre-sliced so after it comes out of the oven, you'll have to, you know, go over where the perforations are to make sure it's a slice for the students. So each piece is two meat meat alternatives and two grain per serving. So the pizzas come out of the oven. The 12 to 15 minutes uh, worked out perfectly. I did this for 12 minutes. There was only one tray in the oven, so you know it's gonna cook more quickly. So keep that in mind. If you're filling the oven with, you know, four to five trays at a time, it's gonna cool down the inside of the oven, so it's gonna to have to recover, so it may take a little bit longer. Just keep an eye on the times for that. So 12 to 15, so you might need uh, 14 to 17, so depending on, you know, how much your oven catches up. So uh, just keep an eye on it. So what I did after, Six minutes, I rotated it so it cooks more evenly all the way around in case the oven doesn't cook evenly. Um, 350, fan on high, 12 to 15 minutes, turn halfway through. Uh, final cooking temperature has to be at least 165 to be food safe from the manufacturer, so that's what I'm gonna put in the recipe. Um, I temp this, it came out at 172. And that's that. So if you have a pizza cutter in your kitchen, you can use this to separate the slices. Um, if you don't have one in your kitchen, you can order it through CK and they have them there. Or you can also use a knife to help separate the slices. I use a pair of tongs and kind of find where you think the edge of the pizza is and then follow the line up to separate the slice. So that's using a knife. And then to finish this cut, I'll use the pizza cutter or the pizza wheel. And then I'll go all the way to the other side. And then the next slice. I'm going to use the tongue to lift up the edge so you can kind of tell where the perforation is. And once you get an eye for it, you know, after the first couple of pieces, you might be able to see it better. And you'll probably whisk it a lot more fast than I can. So I'm just trying to show you different techniques and ideas for this. And then when you put it in the warmer to keep it warm for lunch, um, I would just go ahead and put the whole tray into the warmer. Just being careful your warmer's not too hot. You want it to stay warm, but not stay in there and keep baking. So make sure your warmer is probably like 150 to 155, somewhere you're just gonna keep it warm. If you have multiple serving times, um, once you go through this tray, um, put another piece of paper on it and you can spray it down again and put a pizza on it again. It's safe because you're using the same product. So it'd be different if you were doing chicken and then putting pizza on it. You can't do that. But since you're only cooking pizza, you can reuse this tray to do that so you don't have to clean it in between. And it might save you cleaning a couple of pans.